Marilyn Pauline Kim Novak is an American retired film and television actress, painter, and mental health advocate. Novak began her film career in 1954 after signing with Columbia Pictures, starring in many movies, including Picnic in 1955, The Man with the Golden Arm in 1955, and Pal Joey in 1957. She's widely known for her performance as Madeleine Elster, Judy Barton in Alfred Hitchcock's thriller Vertigo with James Stewart. Novak was born in Chicago, Illinois on February 13, 1933. The daughter of Joseph and Blanche Novak, both her parents were of Czech descent. Her father was a history teacher who took a job as a freight dispatcher on the Chicago, Milwaukee and St. Paul Railroad during the Depression. Her mother was a factory worker. She attended William Penn Elementary, Farragut High School and Wright Junior College. She won two scholarships at the School of Art Institute of Chicago and during a summer break in her last semester of junior college, Novak went on a cross-country tour modeling for a refrigerator company at trade shows. While stopping by Los Angeles, Novak was crowned Miss Deep Freeze by the refrigerator company. While there, she and two other models stood in line to be extras in two RKO films, The French Line, 1954, and Son of Sinbad, filmed in 1953, but not released until 1955. There she was discovered by an agent who signed her to a long-term contract with Columbia Pictures. From the beginning of her career, she wanted to be an original and not another stereotype. Therefore, she fought with Columbia's chief, Harry Cohn, over changing her name. He suggested the name Kit Marlowe, arguing no one's going to go to see a girl with a Polak name. But she insisted on keeping her name saying I'm Czech, not Polish. Czech, no matter, it's my name. Two sides eventually settled on the name Kim Novak as a compromise. Columbia intended for Novak to be their successor to Rita Hayworth, their biggest star of the 1940s, whose career had declined. Also, the film was hopeful that Novak would bring them the same box office success Marilyn Monroe brought 20th Century Fox. Novak's first role for the studio was the film noir Pushover in 1954, in which he received third billing below Fred McMurray and Philip Carey. She then co-starred in the romantic comedy Ft in 1954 as Janice, a character who finds Robert Tracy, Jack Lemmon, real cute. Both films were reasonably successful at the box office and Novak received favourable reviews for her performances. In her third feature film, Five Against the House, a gritty crime drama, she received equal billing with Guy Madison. It was only a minor critical and box office success. She then played Madge Owens in the film version of Picnic in 1955 from the William Ng play, co-starring William Holden and Rosalind Russell. Its director Joshua Logan felt that it would be more in character for Novak to have red hair. She agreed to wear a red wig during filming. Picnic was a renowned critical and box office triumph. Novak won a Golden Globe for Most Promising Newcomer. She was also nominated for BAFTA Film Award for Best Foreign Actress, but didn't win. After appearing in a series of successful movies, Novak became one of the biggest box office draws of 1957 and 1958. Columbia then placed her in a film adaptation of Pal Joey, based on the 1940 novel and the Broadway play, both written by John O'Hara. Playing Linda English, a naive showgirl, she again co-starred opposite Frank Sinatra and Rita Hayworth. Released in October, the film received favourable reviews, with Variety calling it a strong and funny entertainment show. Although Novak's performance has generated mixed reviews, partly because of the noticeable lack of on-screen charisma, the movie was a box office hit 
and consider one of Novak's better performances. Director Alfred Hitchcock was working on his next film Vertigo in 1958, when his leading actress Vera Miles became pregnant and had a withdrawal from the complex role of Judy Barden. Hitchcock approached Harry Cohn to offer Novak the female lead, without even requesting a screen test. Though Cohn hated the script, he allowed Novak to read it because he considered Hitchcock to be a great director. Novak loved it, she could identify with the character, and agreed to take part in the filming without even meeting Hitchcock. At the same time, she was striking for more money from Columbia and refused to show up for work on the Vertigo set to protest a salary of $1,200 a week. Novak hired new agents to represent her and demanded an adjustment in her contract. Cohn, who was paid $250,000 for Novak to do Vertigo, suspended her, but after a few weeks of negotiations, he relented and offered her a new contract worthy of a major star. She was now receiving $3,000 a week and explained to the press, I don't like to have anyone take advantage of me. Novak finally reported in for work and according to Hitchcock, she had all sorts of preconceived notions about her character, including what she would and would not wear. Before shooting began, she told the director she did not like the grey suit and black shoes she was slated to wear, thinking of them too heavy and stiff for her character. Hitchcock explained to Novak that the visual aspect of the film was even more important to him than the story, insisting on her wearing the suit and shoes that he had been planning for several months. Novak learned to make it work for her, and as she saw it as a symbol of her character. Hitchcock allowed Novak freedom to develop the character herself, and as she later recalled, it excited her to work on dual personalities, because she thought she had so many herself. The film had mixed reviews at the time of its release in 1958, and broke even at the box office, but since has been re-evaluated and is widely considered one of the director's best works. In the 2012 British Film Institute's Sight and Sound Critics poll, Vertigo was voted the best film of all time, displacing Orson Welles' Citizen Kane from the position it had occupied since 1962. Novak received mixed reviews for her performance, but managed to surprise film critics. Novak again worked with Stewart and Richard Quillen's Bell, Book and Candle in 1958, a comedy tale of modern-day witchcraft, and proved to be a box off success. She starred opposite Frederick March in the acclaimed Middle of the Night the following year, which was described as not only her favourite film, but also cited as a performance in Middle of the Night as her best. After a series of hits during the 60s, by the end of 1966, Novak said she was emotionally drained and no longer wanted to live the life of a Hollywood movie star in the glare of the spotlight with the press criticising her every move. One of the main instigations of this was her divorce from actor Richard Johnston. The divorce was amicable and they remained friendly, but the press were intrusive and that seemed to make her change her mind about appearing in any of the films. When a mudslide took her Bel Air home and cost her entire life savings in bulldozer fees, she moved away from Hollywood to discover herself anew. From then on, acting became a job. It was no longer a career choice. Novak preferred to concentrate on her first love, the visual arts, often writing poetry to accompany her paintings, and even writing some song lyrics. Harry Belafonte and the Kingston Trio recorded some of her folk songs in the 1960s. Novak did return to screen in The Legend of Lyra Clare in 1968, starring Peter Finch and Ergus Borgin, directed by Robert Aldridge. During the 1970s, she took very few film roles. She had a small role in White Buffalo in 1977, starring Charles Bronson and she ended the decade by playing Helga in Just a Gigolo, opposite David Bowie. Both films were flops, but Novak was not blamed due to her minor roles. In 1980, Novak played fictional actress Lola Brewster, 
in the British mystery thriller The Mirror Cracked, based on the Agatha Christie story. She co-starred alongside Angela Lansbury, Tony Curtis, Rock Hudson and Elizabeth Taylor. She enjoyed making the film and got along with co-stars and the film was moderately successful. Novak did not appear in any further feature film during the remainder of the 80s, but producers of successful primetime soap opera Falcon Crest offered Novak a role in their series similar to her character in Vertigo. She appeared as the secretive Kit Marlowe in 19 episodes between 1986 and 1987. It was Novak's idea to name the character Marlowe, as it was a stage name Columbia had wanted to use when she was starting out in the business. The former Marilyn Pauline Novak wryly described the turn of events as effectively being Cohen's revenge on her from beyond the grave. Director Mike Foggis offered Novak the role of terminally ill writer with a mysterious past in his thriller Liebstrom in 1991, opposite Kevin Anderson and Bill Pullman. Novak loved the script and thought it was going to be an important picture. However, her collaboration with Figgis was tense and the two had conflicts from the beginning. Novak said that she often felt like he wanted to act like a puppet and that wasn't the way she wanted to work. Novak often said that it was the difficult experience with Liebstrom that led to her retiring from the industry. After retirement for acting, Novak made only rare public appearances and turned down most offers she received. In 1996, Vertigo was given a restoration by Robert A. Harris and James C. Katz and re-released to theatres. Novak loved their work so much she agreed to make an appearance at the screenings of the film, something she refused when Universal asked her in 1984. She also appeared in Obsessed with Vertigo, a documentary retracing the making and restoration of the film. In 1997, Novak received an honorary Golden Bear Award for Lifetime Achievement at the 47th Berlin International Film Festival. In 2003, Novak was presented with the Eastman Kodak Archives Award for a major contribution to film. In 2012, she was honoured at the TCM Classic Film Festival, where she introduced a screening of Vertigo. After years of seclusion, Novak started to make public appearances again in 2013. She was recognised as a guest of honour at the Cannes Film Festival that year and attended where she introduced a newly restored version of Vertigo. She also took part in the film's closing ceremony as a presenter, earning a standing evasion upon her entrance. In 2014, she was presenter at the 86th Academy Awards, and the same year appeared at the TCM Classic Film Festival where she unveiled her painting Vertigo Vortex of Dilution commissioned by the TCM Network as part of their 20th anniversary. In 2018, Novak joined in conversation with Larry King for a Q&A session in celebration of Vertigo's 60th anniversary. That same year, she was recipient of a special sold-out tribute from the Castro Theatre. In a personal life, Novak's first marriage was to English actor Richard Johnson between March 15, 1965 and May 26, 1966. After her engagement to director Richard Quine, much was made of her relationship with Sammy Davis Jr. A BBC documentary claimed that to end her relationship with a black man, Columbia Pictures chief Harry Cohn had mobsters threaten Sammy Davis Jr. with blinding or having his legs broken if he didn't marry a black woman within 48 hours. In 1966, Novak left Hollywood for Big Sur, where she raised horses and painted, making an occasional film. In 1974, she met her husband, equine veterinarian Robert Malloy, when he made a house call after one of her Arabian mares suffered colic. They married on March 12, 1976. As a result of her marriage, she has two adult stepchildren. Malloy died on November 27, 2020. In 1997, Novak bought a 43-acre ranch in Sam's Valley, Oregon, 
which the couple made in their home. Novak took classes in painting with pastels from artists Harley Brown and Richard McKinley. In July 2000, their home burned to the ground. She lost all her art and the only draft of her autobiography that she'd been working on for 10 years. In 2006, Novak was injured in a horse riding accident, suffering a punctured lung, broken ribs and nerve damage, but she made a full recovery within a year. In 2010, her manager Sue Cameron reported that Novak had been diagnosed with breast cancer. Cameron also noted that Novak was undergoing treatment and her doctors said she was in fantastic physical shape and should recover well, which she did. After a rare public appearance at the 86th Academy Award, the media and social commentary indicated that she was hardly recognisable, which resulted in speculation that she'd undertaken substantial cosmetic surgery. Novak was devastated by the criticism, especially things like Donald Trump tweeting Kim should sue her plastic surgeon. She said it really threw me into a tailspin and hit me hard, and she wrote an open letter in which she stood up to all her Oscarite bullies. She admitted that she had fat injections in her face because she felt it was far less invasive than a facelift but she later said she regretted it. Novak continued her creative endeavours as a photographer, poet and visual artist, painting in watercolour, oil and pastel. Her paintings are impressionistic and surrealistic. The Butler Institute of American Art in Youngstown, Ohio, hosted a retrospective of her work from June until October 2019. Making one of her more recent rare appearances, Novak was present for the opening on June 16th.